you have gone out to this unbelievable place, taken some unbelievable photographs, but now you're back in front of the computer and guess what? You have to go through thousands and thousands of images. You hate it, so did I. But let's see if I can help you out a little bit and give you a little bit of a trick on how to get this thing done quick and come up with your best images. Hey guys, this is Ejaz. I'm a fashion and wildlife photographer. You must have seen my work in magazines like Vogue and Elle and Bazaar and, and Twill and so on. And I have to speak to you guys today regarding something that, that I haven't heard much about on YouTube or anywhere else. People don't speak about it that much, but it's really, really important. And I hope by the end of this, you guys will learn how to save time. So it's about your selects. Have you ever gone out uh, taking pictures on a shoot for horses or any kind of wildlife or, or any subject for that matter? And then you've come back, sat in front of the computer and said, ah, can't do it today. Ah, I can't do it tomorrow. It never, ever, ever happens because you have tens and thousands and thousands and thousands of photographs to go through. One of the reasons why you have so many photographs is because you, before you went for the shoot, you didn't decide what emotion you want to come back with, right? So when you decide what emotion you want to come back with, you shoot less. So I have spoken about this in the past, in the past videos that there's a difference between a photo and an image. A photo is something that you take out your, your phone and you go click, click and it's done. That's a photo. And if you have an image, then the image is something that speaks to your audience. It has an emotion. So if you predetermine your emotion before you leave for your shoot, you're going to come back with specific images. And at that point, it makes it easier to say, okay, this is what it is. I'm just going to tell you guys, I was exactly in the same boat. I did exactly the same thing. I didn't shoot as many photographs simply because I came from the film background where we bought a roll and, and every every frame was a, was a lot of money as far as I'm concerned. So I was very stingy with my shots. So, I'm so I, I am stingy with my shots now as well with taking pictures, even though digital is free. Uh, and I'm gonna say it, free is very, very expensive because can you imagine going through these tens and thousands of images i think that's very time consuming and i think that's where your money is so if you shoot in a specific way knowing what you want you will shoot less so off the bat that's one issue i think the other thing that you do want to keep in mind is every time you feel while you are shooting that you have a shot then you put your hand in front of the lens and take one shot. So this way you have a marker. There's no need to go because you'll miss the action, you know? So there's no need to go into your back of your camera and, and put a marker or put a mark and say, this is the good one. It's very simple. Put your hand in front of the lens, click, click. And when you come back, you will know the one before that hand was the good one. But people have asked me, each has, how do you do your selects? Is there a process to it? Is there a math to this? There isn't a math. I tend to make it very, very simple. I, and I've built that muscle, so to speak, to make it so simple for myself. And what it is, is that I don't let myself look at any of my images for more than two seconds at the most. It's literally click, click click next 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 and what happens is i've trained my brain and my heart to feel the emotion immediately so i'm looking through it look of course you know it's it's the digital world and i i do take many more photographs compared to the way i used to take my photographs in the past when i was shooting film so i do have hundreds of photographs to go through and the only way I can go through them 
is number one you know the hand trick that i just told you guys about i think that's to me that's awesome because you know the one before that will be the one that you liked at least then because you were looking through the camera and you're seeing what is good and what's not good what you like and what you feel but now you're in front of the computer and things may change totally things may totally totally change and the thing the image that you thought was good is not good anymore but here is a simple simple way of getting through your tens and thousands of images don't look at an image for more than two seconds i promise you the image that you absolutely love will pop out with this two second it may be difficult in the beginning it will be difficult in the beginning but you keep on practicing this two second rule click 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 next 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 and the one that speaks to your heart and your soul will jump at you and you will freeze i promise you you will freeze so again there's no math to this i had a girl from uh, i believe she was from london somewhere she calls me up and she's like ejas do you have do you have some kind of a of a equation uh, how do you do your selects and i'm like i don't i go next 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 the one that speaks to me i stop and that's it that's that's the end of it take that image process it retouch it keep going now i and again i i have a goal in mind that every shoot that i go to i should come back with at least one one image now if i have taken 1500 images i got to choose just one if i have taken 3000 images maybe i'll give myself two three is the absolute maximum i do not go past three images per shoot that's like impossible so the first thing you do is your hand the second thing when you come back in front of the computer you let your heart speak not your brain speak that's number 2 and the other thing i'm going to tell you is of course to make that select with your heart you'll go through all your images you are going to come up with more than just one or two and at that point that's when you get technical right you get technical you start thinking is this sharp is it not sharp that's if that's what you want you know if you want it to be sharp then it should be sharp if you want it to be blurry then you should ask yourself is this blurry what whatever you are looking to do so in my case i go and i let my heart talk to me and once that is done with the talking i've gone through all the images now all of a sudden i have 10 images to look at and i'm like ah i got to look at 10 images again and decide which one that's the more critical part i think so i take the 10 and i go through the technical stuff is the exposure perfect is the um, uh, is the focus correct is the composition right and if all those three things are right and it's speaking with you then that's your image and if you go through all the 10 images and they all speak to you and they all have all the perfect technicalities right so the the exposure the the sharpness and the composition now what do you do so i personally think i take half first five half take them and put them somewhere else put it in a in a bin or a folder which is for 6 months down the road because you know what you've just done you have just saved yourself another trip for the same subject right if you're going to shoot horses you come back with 10 now you have only 5 so you're going to process the 5 you're going to give them your heart and soul you're going to retouch them you're going to do whatever it takes to make them look absolutely unbelievable and the other 5 you're going to put it in a folder and you're going to save it for 6 months down the road and when 6 months have passed and you have this itch to go back and shoot the same animal again look at that folder and pull those five images out and if they're still speaking with you and and your heart still loves them not your brain your heart still loves them retouch it call me up and tell me that you saved so much money on going not going to this trip and i'll be really 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 happy because i think you know you can you can show your clients 
10 images at the same time because they will get confused. So show them five, show them three at the most, save it for the next six months or one year down the road. People always look for new content. So do it that way. And in selecting, you have to know this one last thing that I'm going to tell you. It's not what you see. When your heart is speaking about an image and saying, oh my God, that's absolutely amazing. Trust me, it's only 10% because 90% of the work is still to be done in your retouching. I mean, I don't work with Nat Geo because one of the reasons earlier on in my, in my career, they said no retouching. Uh, you cannot do this and you cannot take out objects and you cannot do this. I'm sorry, but I'm an artist. Yes, I'm an artist first, I'm a photographer second. I need to change my images. So for me, what happens is, you know, it's like it's a, like a relationship with that image. So you like that image. I, for me, what I do is I like that image, I keep it at the side. I sleep on it for at least two days. I come back, I look at it, and if it's still speaking to me and I still want to take the image out on a date for a dinner, great, then I'm going to start retouching it. I retouch it to a point where I feel it's presentable and then I leave it and I let go. And then what I do is I wait for another few days, I put it aside, I come back, I look at it and I say, what have I done wrong with my retouching? I correct that and I retouch it again and again and again, this process keeps happening. For weeks, sometimes even for a month. I mean, the last shoot I did was the bull, which was, I'm gonna say four months ago. I haven't released those images yet because something inside my heart is telling me it's not perfect. There is no equation of selecting. There is no equation, so to speak, about saying that's a perfect image. The perfect image is what in your heart. I'm not in your brain, in your heart. And if your heart says it's a perfect image, that's the image you take and then you go show it to your, your clients. So I, I hope you guys get the entire circle. You go with a goal in mind. I want a happy wolf image or a happy horse image or a sad horse image or some kind of emotion. So when you go with that, you're gonna shoot less. When you shoot less, you come back, you're not gonna get an anxiety attack. That's one. Number two, you will have to go through less images which makes life easy. And then after that, you know, you just let the image talk to you back and forth and back and forth. And if the image keeps on talking to you till the end, and here's a bigger clue I have to give you. If you don't want to ever sell that image, that is the image because you are in absolutely love with that image. That happens to me all the time. I don't, I, I love to make it. I love to create it. I love it. It's done. It's absolutely perfect. The first client turns around and says, okay, I want to get that. My heart goes, oh, <laughs> I don't want to sell it. That's how you choose your images. I hope this helps. I will speak to you guys soon. Thanks.